may not believe it, but this is really Private McGillicuddy, and his unusual activity is quite a surprise. Face mask, rubber gloves, disinfectant. Looks like he's preparing for an important operation. And he is. He's going to wash his mess gear. Although he's knocking himself out with all this surgical etiquette, there's good reason for it. Mac is not taking any more chances. So draw up a foxhole and we'll tell you why. Once upon a time, McGillicuddy ignored the commandment, thou shalt carefully and faithfully wash thy mess gear both before and after meals. For verily, if thou become negligent in this habit, thy gut shall be like knots in a wet rope. So, while the other men went through their usual routine of cleaning their mess gear in scalding hot soapy water, McGillicuddy would stash his lazy butt under a coconut tree and wash his gear in his own way. Sure, it looks clean, but it isn't. You can't clean your mess gear by licking it. You can't? No, that just makes it look pretty. Here, look at it through this magnifying glass. You see those little spots? They're bits of decayed food, no telling how long they've been there. Now watch closely. Cute, ain't he? That is a germ. You ain't seen nothing yet. Take another gander. Now watch him multiply. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred twenty-eight, two hundred fifty-six, and eight million nine hundred seventy thousand five hundred sixty-two. If you haven't been washing your mess gear properly, you've been eating those dirty microscopic scavengers. Well, that's more like it. And that isn't all. You've got to wash it again before you eat. Otherwise, stray insects, uh, like this fly, for instance, will foul it up again. Maybe he's just been to the privy, or maybe a garbage dump, and undoubtedly is packed with dysentery germs. If you're not careful, McGillicuddy, you will be too. What's more? Hey, you knucklehead, wake up. I'm talking to you. There's a fly on your mess gear. Now don't forget to wash that thing before you eat. <laughs> That's right, Mac. First in line, last in brain. Let them pile all that good, wholesome food on top of those germs. Remember, Mac, thy gut shall be like knots in a wet rope. McGillicuddy and the bad little germs and how he learned to wash his mess gear and live happily ever after.
Let's consider water. Not carbonated water or toilet water, but just plain everyday water, H2O. You probably never gave it a second thought. It used to be when you wanted a drink of water, you just took it. But now, thou shalt not drink water from any other source than that designated, else thou become victim to an unhappy fate more painful than Japanese lead. Thou shalt use thy water sparingly and wisely, else thy days and thy brother's days shall be numbered. So, brother, in a combat area, get your water from a lister bag. It may not taste like the water from that old oaken bucket, but it is pure and healthful. Use it wisely. When you're on a march under a blistering hot sun, even that chlorine tastes good. So good that some jerks want to down it all at once. Like, uh, like our old friend, McGillicuddy. Kinda hot, ain't it, Mac? Well, why don't you take a little drink? Here we go. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? What a jerk. For two months, we've been begging him to take a bath, and now he does it. The great McGillicuddy, full of vim and full of water. An empty canteen and an empty head. Now, let's see how far he gets. Oh, beginning to drag it, eh? Now it's really getting hot. Hotter than it was before, huh, Mac? Oh, your tongue's dry, isn't it, Mac? You know what you ought to have? You ought to have a nice, cool, drink of water. Why don't you look in your canteen? You started out with plenty of water. There it is, Mac. Water! Get it, Mac! Oh, that's a dirty, low-down shame. <laughs> water! All right, Mac, don't get dramatic. After all, you're only a couple of miles from camp. Water! Water! Mac, Mac, come back, Mac! Don't, Mac! Come back, come back here! Stop! Listen, knucklehead, you can't drink that water. It hasn't been inspected. It might even be poison. Yatata, yatata, yatata. Quit beating your gums. Now, how do you feel about drinking that water? Not so good, huh? Well, let's take a look upstream and see what gives that stuff its kick. See, Mac? Here's you. Here's the gorilla. A few dead Japs. Some pigs. And a native village. What's wrong with a native village? Very pretty, very pretty. But, uh, do you know what that is? That, McGillicuddy, is a headhunter's head. Direct from the manufacturer to the consumer. A prize in every package. And brother, you hit the jackpot.
Cuddy. Thou shalt eat only the rations inspected, found fit, and provided for thy use. For verily, many native foods contain poisons more treacherous than a Jap warlord. Somebody once said, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. That is, everybody's but McGillicuddy's. He's particular. He doesn't like Vienna sausage. He doesn't realize he's in the South Pacific. He thinks he's in the Brown Derby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, Mac. It's monotonous. The same thing day after day. But it's good food, and it's good for you. But Mac will show him how to get along on a South Pacific island. He's a gourmet. A gastronomical Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, they look like bananas. They peel like bananas. But they don't taste like bananas, do they? You know why? Because they're not bananas. They're plantains. And you can't eat them raw. Well, what's this? A native victory garden, no doubt. Carrots, rutabagas, turnips. Well, whatever they are, they're sure beauties. Mmm, well kept, well cultivated. But these boys are not just passing the time. They're passing the fertilizer. And from you know where. While this sort of fertilizer is very effective, it produces a lot more than just vegetables. Take a look and you'll see what I mean. No, she ain't nothing. Oh boy, apples. Beach apples. Good, huh? But you know what they do to you? Well, the juice contains an acid, uh, which uh, uh, attacks a tissue, and, and you have a chemical reaction uh, which results in a sort of a hot foot, or uh, a rather a severe inflammation of the, uh, well, anyway, it burns the hell out of your tongue. That's the spirit, Mac. Eat your K rations and like it. <laughs> Mac's brains are still in his stomach. Well, the man who came to dinner. Look, Mac. We're not complaining about your manners, and it's all right to be friendly with the natives. But their food is not prepared in the most sanitary fashion. Very often, the food which they handle, and you're now packing away, is infested with germs, which are extremely difficult to digest. <coughs> oh, pardon me. We see you, Mac. This is what you've been waiting for. Hey, Mac, in a couple of seconds, you'll have that big turkey dinner. 
yum, yum, roast turkey and cranberries. And, oh, here we go again. George! Too bad, Mac. You missed the boat. But then we'll have turkey again. Sometime. But in the meantime...
Hey, Sarge! Okay, McGillicuddy. When you gotta go, you gotta... Hey, look out, Mac! Thou shalt not use any spots except chosen ones for the deposition of your excrement. Thou shalt not urinate in thy brother's tent or street, else he regard thee as a dog and pee accordingly. In other words, that means use your head. Avoid contaminating any area which could result in dysentery for your entire unit. Oh, I gotta go to the toilet. Cuddy's private one holer. What a layout. Sunshade, library, toilet tissue, beautiful view, even gardenias. And a hell of a good home for dysentery germs. <laughs> what a dope. Yeah, what a dope. Because of one man's carelessness, a whole unit is flat on its back. Whoa, Tokyo, Corrine! Whoa, Tokyo, Corrine! Whoa, so good news! We discover we have in the South Pacific Yankee Marine who help our Japanese war efforts. This Yankee, all the time, make honorable bow movement in wrong location. Or his buddy Yankee get a dysentery. Oh, make a week like a pussycat. This honorable Yankee name McGillicuddy. McGillicuddy? Yeah, McGillicuddy. Go get him, boys. Cuddy, you made your bed, now lie it. <laughs> 